Have you ever wondered how many Falcon 9 boosters it would take to lift a starship into orbit? N no? Um, uh, ooh. Well, you're gonna find out anyway. But that's not all we're gonna be doing in today's video, because in addition to turning Falcon 9 into Super Heavy, we are also going to be hosting probably the dumbest drag race of all time, and we're also going to see what happens if we ram a nuke into the Kerbal Space Center. So let's get to it! Okay, so here we have a pretty regular looking starship. I've loaded up with a little bit of a payload in here. Go and close that door, and we're going to go ahead and give this guy a little bit of a launch. Alright, here we are, just a pretty normal looking starship out here at launch. We throw the uh, engines up, hit the go button, and it lags a little bit at the beginning, but uh, as you can see, even with those full ore tanks, we are just jumping off of the pad, absolutely zooming. We are having absolutely no problem getting to orbit like this. So naturally, I have to ask the question, if one super of you can get a starship into the air that easily, what if we were to kind of exchange the super heavy for a little bit of a Falcon 9? Yes, a Falcon 9. We take one of the uh, one of the Falcon boosters over here, if I can find it. I'm being very stupid. Here it is. One of the Falcon boosters is kind of just, just plonk it onto there. Throw some engines on, of course. We're not going to get very far without engines. So if we were to just go ahead and go ahead and do that, I wonder... You know, I wonder how that would work. All right, here we are, out on the pad with a completely normal looking rocket as per usual. So we're gonna go ahead, hit the SAS button, hit the throttle button, hit the go button. And, um, yeah, I, I think this is kind of what we expected. Yeah, ooh. Yeah, that's not gonna go places, I don't, I don't think, no, unfortunately. All right, so looks like we may need to make some slight modifications for this to work. In the meantime, why don't we go ahead and head over to the Kerbal Space Center runway to see what we got cooking up over there. Alrighty folks, here we are on the Kerbal Space Center runway for the drag race of the century. We have four of the most epic rockets going against each other. We have the SLS, the Saturn V, the Starship, and the New Glenn... Yeah, I know, very funny. Um, these guys are all going to go on a head-to-head, -head, a four-way race to say who is the most epic rocket of all time. I did one of these before. It was Starship versus, not Starship, Saturn V versus SLS. I might have also done a Starship Starship. I've done too many videos. You guys seem to like it. It's like one of my most popular videos. So I decided let's do it again, but with more rockets. So if you know anything about the TWR of these different vehicles, you may have an idea who is going to win. But hey, I mean, look at these. These aren't exactly, exactly, you know, two scales. You know, when some goofiness may ensue. I know we've got some, some ominous clouds coming into view as we as we begin our epic race. So without further ado, let's throttle up and let's get ready to go in five, a four, a three, a two, a one, a go! Oh, lag, lag, oh, 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 here we go! Oh, we have explosions and they're off! All right, it looks like SLS and Starship are going off to a little... Oh, what are you doing, SLS? What are you doing? Oh, God, we have some... Oh, God, oh, God, that's not some... Oh, oh. Uh oh, we air oh oh no. Oh jeez, oh that's not that can't be good. Oh um well um I think we have a winner. Um and on and oh he doesn't oh we're getting to the end here. Um oh Jesus. Um oh god uh save save him save him save yourself Ah Radio out radio out Stop you win but you're gonna Oh oh you're gonna die Oh He's alive! That went dumb. Well, we started out with three rockets and we have, um, zero. Well, that went swimmingly. All right, how about we go check back up on our uh, Falcon Starship kind of situation here, see if we can have a little bit more success over on that front. All right, so maybe instead of just the one Falcon 9, you were to maybe increase the Falconage, so to speak. So let's go ahead and we can maybe grab a little bit of a uh, one of these guys over here, one of the little uh, engine plates. Chuck one of these on, so we can go maybe, let's try, let's try three Falcons. All right. Boom. Triple the Falcon, triple the epicness. So if we were to go like this, space it out a little bit, and now we have three Falcons on the bottom of a starship. Let's give this a try. All right, here we are back on the pad with the triple whammy, the hat trick of Falcons. Let's see if that's enough to get us going. Boom, power! Ah, 
No power. Where my power? Oh, 0.99. Maybe. Maybe. <gasps> she moving, boys. She moving. We have. <laughs> that looks so ridiculous. We have lift off. Dun 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 dun. I don't think we're gonna get very close to orbit, to be honest. And of course, since we are talking about Falcons and Starships here, this all has to, of course, be reused. So we need to save enough fuel of these little boosters over here to make sure we can get them back to landing. So we've already used like ooh, about a about three quarters or about a third, a third I can do math, about a third of our uh, our total fuel in our Falcon. So if we were to kind of reuse these, we're gonna have to start getting a little bit quicker, a little bit more speed on the Starship. Uh, let's keep going up here. Maybe start a little bit more of a turn here. We'll burn the boosters. I don't know. Let's call it 420 because memes, I guess. So there's 500. Here is 450 Delta V left. 420. Oh, over did a little bit. All right. Save. Stage. Zoom that out of here. And let's see if we have enough fuel to make it back for a bit of a landing. I don't really have much control over here, so we're going to have to just see if we can just get a nice little boost. Alright, that should about do it. Let's see if we can run one, one engine. Oh yeah, that works. We can do that. Alright. So we have about 1300 Delta V. I'm going to just, so this should be enough. We have a little bit of extra, I think, so we can kind of be a little bit eh, maybe we need to go a little bit of speed here. Oh, nice. Nice and gentle. Oh, we might be dead. We might be dead. Um, uh, next engine mode. All right, there we go. We're good. Fixed it. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, KSP is such a realistic game, guys. All right, now we have... I want to waste all our fuel here, but we'll just keep it coming down, keep it coming down, go for a nice, smooth landing here. Bleed the speed a bit more. Ooh, that is not bad right there. And uh, you have no landing legs. I figured that just this would be a wide enough base, and it looks like it is. So let's uh, let's go for the final test here and see if the ship has enough uh, enough fuel to make it into orbit. So here we are. We have a uh, jettison the booster, and here we go to see if we have enough delta V to get our ship into orbit. I mean, we have about 27. We should actually turn off the header tank because that's for landing. So we have about 2,500 delta V, and we're going 300 right now. So that should probably be enough to get ourselves into orbit. Once you get to about 800 meters a second, I think we can turn off the first sea level. And then maybe do it at 800, 1,000, 1,500. That might be what we do. Eight, no, it's 800, 1,000, 1,200. Do that every 200. See if this works. So we can shut you down. This will help with our efficiency. Keep it pitching. Oh, I totally passed 1,000. I meant to, meant to turn this off. Last one comes off at 1,200, which is right here, so we'll turn you off. And uh, maybe we want RCS to help us control a little bit, because without the gimbling engines, yeah, we don't have any way to really control ourselves. All right, here comes approaching two kilometers a second. Once our app is above 80 kilometers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut these engines. All right, there's two kilometers a second. We are very, very close. We actually can almost probably pitch about five degrees. Getting a little bit of heating effects going on here up front, but really, really nothing to be concerned about. These guys should have their ISP max out at uh, 357. Maybe we'll go up to 360 or something at the, at the end. All right, there is 80 and right about at 2300 meters per second. Cue the Jeopardy song as we kind of time lapse that. Do 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 do. Bop, ba da 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 da. Orbit. Look at that. Now I could end the video right here, but why would I want to do that when instead I can go blow? 
All right, here we are on the launch pad of the Kerbal Space Center, and in front of us we have a pretty simple and basic looking rocket. But if we were to have a peek under the fairing, you know, look under the hood here, we see a little bit of a, uh-oh, a bit of a no-no device going on up in here. Yes, this is the uh, the Fat Man nuclear bomb that was dropped uh, on the city of Nagasaki in Japan. And right now, what we're gonna do is gonna take our little rocket here, shoot it up into the sky, we're gonna stage it away, we're gonna turn it around, and shoot it straight back down and we're gonna go ahead and give this guy a little bit of a test on our Kerbal Space Center and uh, just to make things a little bit more interesting we have some Kerbals who have very graciously volunteered to be some test subjects so these guys right here are gonna be getting the brunt of it they have volunteered to uh, kind of sit right exactly where we're gonna be dropping the nukes uh, spoiler alert that's where we're gonna be aiming for right on top of the VAB and it comes straight down here and kaboom so uh, I'm sure these guys are obviously expecting to survive and stuff I mean, come on, look at Kerbals, they already look like they've been tested on nuclearly, if you know what I'm talking about. So, um, the rest of our Kerbals have taken a little bit more, taken some precautions, let's say, to, uh, to try to kind of preserve their life. So, uh, let's have a look at our next closest guys, yes. Trillin, Rayrick, and Edfree Kerman have decided to submerge themselves into the pool. Take a little bit of a dip so they can still be pretty close, but they, they, they think they're kind of safe enough away, have taken some safety precautions so that they're really not going to get affected by the blast. I mean, they're only... Uh, what, 400, 500 meters away from the, the impact site? That should totally be enough distance. So the next guys are taking safety a little more seriously. They're, they're, they're camped out a couple, about two and a half kilometers away, just chilling out here, enjoying the grass, enjoying the trees, enjoying the flowers, enjoying the clouds, enjoying the soon-to-be nuclear wasteland. So, um, and these guys are just hanging out. And their last guys, I don't even know what these last guys are doing. I mean, they're... How are they even going to be able to see it from here? I mean, I mean, it's not like it's a nuke or anything. This should that be the... I don't know, maybe these guys are the smart ones. Who knows? Anyway, let's have a look back at our rocket ship right here. We have a Mastodon engine on the bottom. As you can see, big engine, small rocket. We're probably gonna be going pretty quick here. So let's get the engines going. Let's get the launch clamps off. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and tip this guy a couple of degrees um, towards the east because, uh, you know, with the height and the rotation of Kerbin, we wanna make sure we can land nice and square on top of the Kerbal Space Center. So here we go, already crossing 300 meters as we cross around three kilometers in altitude. A little over 30 second burn as we cross the 20 second point, going at about three and a half Gs. So it's, uh, it's quite a bit of speed we've got going here. I'm gonna tip it just a little bit more in that one direction here as they're about to hit the 800 meter a second mark. There it is, and cut. Yeah. Now, we're probably not gonna hit exactly on the VAB, but we'll get close enough. Once we get close, once we, looks like we're just about to land, we're gonna go ahead and fire this missile right here. And three, two, one, fire. And. Oh. All right, um, okay. Uh, it appears you're taking a bit of a, a, a slight, a slight bounce. Um, okay. Um, we may have invented a new crack and drive. I was gonna go ahead and pretend nothing happened. We're gonna go ahead and, go ahead and try that again. So I'm gonna tip it a little bit more to get a little bit closer to the VAB for this attempt. Now that we have learned how it kind of likes to fly, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy just a little bit sooner. So I'll go ahead and fire that skip this guy. And, oh! 